Good evening and welcome to Bothell Parish Church. If you're for the first time or the first time in a long time, it's great to welcome you to this Even Song service. Please, if you haven't been to an Even Song before, just make yourself at home. No one's going to press you to do anything. Tonight is just about being present, being still, and at times singing along, should you wish. Jesus says, Come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So please say together with me the words in bold. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and yet shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord.
Listen now to the word of God from Ephesians chapter 3. I pray therefore that you may not lose heart over my sufferings for you. They are your glory. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the rich of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through though faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.
second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he begun the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, all his possessions, and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused, then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Amen and thanks be to God.
If you're able, please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy children's people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by that thee we, being defeated, defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Here at day's end, we seek you, O King of earth and heaven, you who have been our sustenance across the sunlit hours. Be now our counselor, comforter, and protector in the dark of night. We give thanks to you, God, for the blessings of the day that has passed. We praise you, O Father, for the provision of food and shelter and fellowship and for all other evidences of grace that have been ours. May our hearts always receive such gifts from your hand with true humility and thankfulness. Let our inability to ever perfectly love you, O God, drive us daily to the arms of Christ, wherein the enormity of your mercy and the scandal of such grace lavished upon us would birth in us a new and greater affection for you and a new and greater desire to do that which pleases you. Somehow use even our weaknesses for your glory. Thank you, O Lord, that you are attentive to our cries. Deepen our knowledge of you and your love for us. And may we know that this night the comfort of your spirit whoever abides in and among us. Even now, O Lord, in the dark of this night, let our lives be lit by your love which even darkness cannot hide. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
The Lutheran minister, Nadia Waltz Weber, Weber, writes about the power of forgiveness. She writes it as the power to free us for the work of justice and transformation. She says this, she says, maybe retaliation or holding on to anger about the harm done to me doesn't actually combat evil. Maybe it feeds it. Because in the end, if we're not careful, we can actually absorb the worst of our enemy and at some level start to become them. So what if forgiveness is actually a way of wielding bolt cutters and snapping the chains that link us? So what if forgiveness is actually a way of wielding bolt cutters and snapping the chains that link us. The medical and scientific world has in the last years begun to delve into the importance of forgiveness for our own health and well-being and found that unforgiveness or holding on to past hurts and resentments deeply affects our emotional and physical health. To hold on to our pain is actually bad for us. It eats away at us both physically and mentally and it slowly destroys us from the inside out. Tonight we heard Jesus tackle the topic of forgiveness, no easy task then or now. Jesus tells the disciple Peter that forgiveness in the kingdom of God must be generous beyond limits. There is no limit on the amount of forgiveness we should hand out. Instead, we are taught that forgiveness should be our regular practice, our way of life, our default mode, if you will. Why? Because we are first and foremost a forgiven people. A people generously and lavishly forgiven by God himself, who freely went to the cross to die for our sins that we might be forgiven. And so in light of the abundant grace in which we stand, what possible response can we have but to pay the wealth of God's forgiveness forward? We are to cut ourselves loose with God's bolt cutters of forgiveness. And then as we find ourselves freed, God looks to us saying, go and do likewise. Forgive and cut loose as you have been forgiven. For Jesus commands us to love. I don't stand here lightly talking about forgiveness. You just have to look in the news this week or in our own lives to know that many people and many of us have been hurt beyond words. I'm not advocating that we should ever run back into abuse. Because forgiveness isn't pretending that an offense doesn't matter or that a wound doesn't hurt or that Christianity requires us to forget past harms and let bygones be bygones. Forgiveness isn't acting as if things don't have to change or assume that because God is merciful, God isn't grieved or angered by injustice. The starting line of forgiveness is acknowledgement of wrongdoing of harm, of real and profound violation. Whenever we talk about the need for forgiveness, we must begin by recognizing and naming the extent of the brokenness. Why? Because we were created for good. We were created for love, for equality, for tenderness and wholeness, not for broken relationships of power, of hurt, or pain. Nor were we made to accept the situation as it is, which slowly eats away at our very joy. As image bearers of God, we were made for a just and nurturing world that honors our dignity. When we experience any deviation from that basic goodness, it is appropriate, it is human and healthy and Christian to react with horror. I don't believe that abuse 
and oppression are ever God's will or his plan for anyone. But I do believe that God is always there in the pain and in the mess and from the worst things in life, he sets to work to reflect his love back to us, breaking through the darkness of agony, reminding us to wield our bolt cutters he gives us, cutting ourselves loose and leaving behind the darkness. Because God is in our life story. We can rest assured that our wounds will not end in loss, in trauma, in brokenness and defeat. There will be another turn, another chapter, another path. Because God loves us, we don't have to forgive out of scarcity, but rather we can forgive out of God's abundance. So as we step forward on the journey of hurt, let us be brave enough to wield the bolt cutters of forgiveness and walk forward with God holding our pain today, shining his light for us in our darkness, a light that will never be overcome by any darkness this world or any other has to offer. Amen.
In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide in us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so too we look for you, O Christ. So let us go now, the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may his blessing, his peace, and his love be upon each of us this night, this week, and forevermore. And may his love be upon all those whom we love and those whom we struggle to love. Amen.